What are the steps involved in a microprotidectomy procedure? I'm Dr. Bob Aklaro from Center for Advanced Prodded and Facial Nerve Surgery. The prodidectomy is slightly different for smaller tumors and bigger tumors. So let me first start with a smaller tumor. This is a relatively small tumor, as you can see here, inside the product gland. The incision is always the same here. It starts in front of the earlobe, and then it goes behind the ear in this groove, and it goes about halfway up behind the ear. Once I, the incision is made, the first thing I do is find the greater auricular nerve. This is the nerve that goes to your earlobe and the skin around the, the product gland. So it basically is in charge of feeling in this area, generally the area of the surgery. So during surgery, I find the nerve and I basically push it out of the way so I can get underneath it to the other areas of the product where the tumor may be. Once that's done, I find the branches of the facial nerve that are around and close to my tumor. And then I remove the tumor with a cuff of extra product tissue just so that I can prevent recurrence, right? If I don't take a cuff, then the chance of it coming back is higher. The chance of recurrence overall is 3%. At, at our center, that chance has been even less. If I can bring the two edges of the product together, right? Because product tissue is similar to breast tissue, it's very pliable and we can work with it easily. Then that's what I prefer to do. And that's what you're gonna see here. I bring the two edges together and suture it together, and then I can lay the skin that's here down on it. Now, when I do the surgery, I preserve this layer of tissue called the SMAS layer. This is a tissue that plastic surgeons use to do a facelift. It starts here at about the ear and goes to this line there. And it's a thick, hardy tissue. And when I preserve this and lay it down at the end of the procedure, it separates the product gland from the skin, all right? And now you can see the incision closed. I, I use sutures that are very small, absorbable, and under the surface, and I do a plastic surgery closure. So this is a prodidectomy, microprodidectomy for a small tumor. With a reconstruction, the whole face is exposed so I can make sure the two sides of the face are even. Prodidectomy for a larger tumor. This is a larger tumor. The incision stays the same, as you can see. And the next step is obviously, again, addressing the greater auricular nerve and saving it. Then I remove the tumor with a cuff of extra tissue after identifying the facial nerve at its root and finding all the branches that are close to where I'm gonna be working. Once that's done, I have to do a reconstruction. Now, as you can see here, it'll be hard for me to bring this edge and this edge together because it's too much of a gap and it would cause a difference on the two sides of the face. And that's when I use a portion of this muscle. So the SCM muscle starts all the way at the bone behind your ear. It's attached to your skull and goes all the way down and attaches to your shoulder, your collarbone or clavicle, right? I use a small portion of that. I put it in, I suture it in place. The beauty of the muscle is that it stays intact. It has its own blood supply. So I know it's going to survive and it's your tissue. Your body's not gonna reject it. There are people who use bigger reconstructions or use fat. I find fat to be a little bit less reliable. The fat does shrink. We usually put extra fat so we can account for the shrinkage, but there is a little bit of inconsistency with fat and more consistent with the product tissue. And I don't have to make a separate incision to use the muscle, right, uh, as a reconstruction, whereas fat, I have to make another incision and get the fat from another place in the body. And then once I done, I put a drain in. Whenever I use the muscle, I have to use a drain. And then the incision is again closed in the same way. Now, during the surgery, I use these probes here that you can see, All right? These probes are there for monitoring of the facial nerve. They assess the functioning of the facial nerve. Every time I get close, it tells me. And then I stimulate the nerve after the tumor is removed to make sure all the branches are working, as you can see. Um, these are the steps of a microprotidectomy. You can see in, in rapid action here uh, in a time-lapse visualization of the video. And this is an animation version of it so that it's not so, so gruesome. And you can see the tumor is now being removed right there. And then reconstruction is being done. And then the sutures, incisions are closed. The incision here, you can see it's right there and behind the ear there. So it can be done very well. And this is another visual of a tumor that has been removed. It's a larger tumor. The greater auricular nerve right there that's preserved going to the root of the ear. And then 
Once that's preserved, you can see that the facial nerve, which starts right there and then goes up, is also very well visualized through this microprotectomy incision, right? So the, all the nerves are visualized well with this approach. Uh, the facial nerve, the greater auricular nerve, the tumor is removed. This is a larger tumor that was removed. And now I can stimulate the nerve and make sure all the branches are working. So stimulating the main shows everything, the lower lip, the upper lip, stimulating the upper division shows some functioning of all here, and then the lower division, just the lower lip. So I've, at the end of the procedure, I know that all the nerves are functioning just fine. If you're interested in clear product information and minimally invasive approaches to treating product disease, visit us at productmd.com. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to us, and if you have questions, please ask us the questions so I can make more videos to help answer and guide you along this, you know, it's, it's stress-inducing path that you're on.